let's slide into the second cancer we're going to talk about, which is prostate cancer, far and away the most common cancer in men, uh, something that we unfortunately have to deal with all the time. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I feel like we have our head around it as a disease, um, clini clinically, mm -hmm. you and I, um, how to hunt for it, how to identify early early indicators that it may be at play that would give us lots of runway uh, to intervene and get good outcomes. Um, similar to breast cancer, there was 268,000 new cases wow. last year. Um, about one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during their lifetime. Um, I think the saying was 80% of men, 80 have breast cancer prostate cancer <laughs> like if you, it's one of those things where if you live long enough time in residence the area under the curve a prostate into the eighth decade of life it's pretty likely that a prostate cancer is going to develop in mm -hmm. there the cool thing about getting prostate cancer if there is something cool um in your 80s is that you'll likely die with it not from it mm -hmm. men who run into problems with prostate cancer typically are being diagnosed in their 40s 50s maybe early 60s mm -hmm. this is a real problem because those are the real aggressive forms they mm -hmm. show up really early and they just take off yeah if it doesn't come on the scene till your 80s it's unlikely to create some problems yeah um why is it important again as, as we talked about with breast timing is everything early 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 detection is everything because you go from um a prostate surgery where you remove your prostate surgery, your prostate, remove your prostate and the cancer is out of your body to then being late and you still have to remove the prostate, the source of the tumor, but it's spread elsewhere um, and you can get very bad outcomes mm -hmm. once it's spread. Um, what we need to know. So there's a, there's a huge misconception in the male community around prostate health. Everybody is afraid of prostate cancer, knows about it, doesn't want it. But very few younger men in their 40s and 50s are getting their prostate checked because they think it has to do with uh, a digital rectal exam. Mm. And it's... It's very intimidating. <laughs> yeah. Scary. I mean, it, it's, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a digital rectal exam still has its place in the medical the physical exam of certain things, but it, it is not the ideal screening mechanism for prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. We have it's a really very subjective, right? It's very subjective. <laughs> you know, mm. um, it's it, it's operator dependent. Yep. Um, and it's just not reliable. And it's not something I would ever, for myself or anyone I cared about or anyone I cared for. It is not the way we diagnose and say your prostate is good or not by a digital rectal exam. Mm -hmm. We do a prostate specific antigen, a PSA. This is a very, very specific um, marker that comes from a simple blood draw, non-fasting blood work that shows inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's sensitive for everything and specific for nothing, which makes it a really, really good screening tool because anything that's going on will kick off PSA in the bloodstream. Um, and if there's no PSA kicked off in the bloodstream, that means nothing's going on. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, we like to say that PSAs less than four are not cancer, although you and I both know all too well that isn't always the case. That is not always the case. <laughs> For population health, I guess that's a reasonable recommendation, but I, I would submit that it's the rate of rise year over year as opposed to the absolute value that matters exponentially more. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have eyes on these things, you can see somebody go from a one to a 2.5. You say, oh yeah, well it's still only about halfway to the upper limits of normal. And I would submit, yeah, but at two and a half doublings mm -hmm. um, year over year, why is it rising that fast? We need to look a little further. In that scenario, or if there's some elevated PSA, Traditionally, we would go right to a prostate biopsy, mm -hmm. which, again, probably is what, in a population health-based setting, it's what gets paid for, it's what's on the protocol, and if this, then that, and it's what a lot of men get. Um, it's not what we do. Mm -hmm. We move men right to a prostate MRI. Mm -hmm. um, number one, there are some needless prostate biopsies, and I, don't, I do have a prostate, and I've never had a biopsy, 
but I can assure you I don't want one if I don't need one. And a prostate MRI can, can show down to about one millimeter of detail whether this is, there's something that looks suspicious. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes what we find is it's just BPH, just mm -hmm. a big swollen prostate, firing off some PSA. Sometimes it's something called prostatitis, could be uh, an infection mm -hmm. um, that can be treated with some antibiotics. Um, then after the MRI, if there's a suspicious lesion, we will move to a biopsy. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when, backing up for a minute, when should men start these PSA tests? I mean, we're a little bit more proactive because mm -hmm. a lot of our men opt in for testosterone replacement therapy and right. we have to check that along with their testosterone levels. But in a general setting, is it age 50? No, no. Earlier than that? Yeah, I mean, I would say at least 40 once mm -hmm. a year. Um, I mean, what and it's a blood test, a PSA blood mm -hmm. test. Yeah. I'm not sure what the right answer on the test is. I can tell you in our world, the way we operate, that if there is a man, an adult man who's coming into our world for care, we are getting an annual PSA mm -hmm. just to establish a baseline. Right, right. Because of the rate of rise being my kind of my first early indicator that something is going on, the longer I have data points reflecting what a true baseline is, the better optics I have on a rise and, and the significance of that. Mm -hmm. But if historically you kind of bounce around with a little bit of this, that's your baseline. Mm -hmm. um, and if I only have a singular data point, it's hard to know. Yeah. So it helps with the joint decision making to be a little bit more of a evidence based decision maker, mm -hmm. you know, data driven. Um, I would recommend over 40 every man needs a baseline PSA because mm -hmm. these are in your 40s and 50s are where early prostate cancers that are aggressive and kill men. It's where they show up. Yeah. And it's inexpensive. I mean, it's nothing. A PSA it's, test may be 50 bucks max. I don't know. I, I have no idea what they cost, but it's nominal. Yeah. Uh, and it should be part of your annual mm -hmm. blood work screening. No doubt about it. What about it. A, a Gleason score? I've heard of that before. Is that part of the so a Gleason score biopsy process? Or? Yeah. So when when you <coughs> find a spot that needs to be biopsied and you do the biopsy and the tissue goes off to pathology and the pathologist brings the report back and says yes this is in fact cancer, what the pathologist will also do is assign it a Gleason score uh, and the score effectively is a is a combination of a couple variables but for the sake of this talk. It basically tells you how aggressive this tumor is likely to behave based on the characteristics that the pathologist is seeing. Mm -hmm. And the higher that number, the more aggressive. The lower, the less aggressive it looks. Mm -hmm. um, and what we tend to find is earlier prostate cancers tend to have high Gleason scores and later in life, like the 80-year-old example, yeah, there's a prostate cancer, but it's a Gleason score of two mm -hmm. or something. Like it's slow rolling. It mm -hmm. doesn't look... It doesn't look aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have the same features that gotcha. a really aggressive type of um, tumor would have. Uh, what else do I need to say? Oh, family history. One of the things to really look out for here outside of just the, the greatest risk factor is, is age. Mm -hmm. I mean, the older you are, the higher the risk you're going to have it. What we're really concerned about are accelerators of this disease. You know, family history tends to be a strong family history is a great indicator um, of your likelihood of developing a prostate cancer. Um, most of the people that I talk to that are thought leaders in this space seem to believe if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. There isn't a ton that you're doing to make it worse. Mm -hmm. And there's not a ton you're doing for prostate health that's making it better as a general rule. I mean, obviously, um, there could be some variables that behaviorally that, that um, you know, lifestyle cho choices and th that could put you at a higher. But as a general rule, folks who are going to get prostate cancer will probably end up with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not something you've done wrong, mm -hmm. which means just keep eyes on it. Um, so that's what I've got for prostate cancer. It's a simple blood test. Uh, Women do not need to get prostate screenings because they don't have prostates. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different than breast because both men and women have breast. Mm -hmm. It is not super common for men to get breast, but it happens more than one would think. Mm -hmm. But women never get prostate cancer. 
because they don't have a prostate. <laughs> so that is a discussion just for men. If you're taking notes, 